So today we're gonna be making an Adirondack chair out of this uh, 53 gallon whiskey barrel. We just uh, freshly dumped it a couple days ago. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start knocking the rings off the barrel. So I just have a ball peen hammer and I have just a piece of stainless round. I'm just gonna start knocking some of these bands down. So you can see the bourbon spilling out on the floor. If this barrel was drier, it would be a lot easier to take this apart. The hoops are pretty tight. Um, but we just have one last ring here. good, except for when you want to take it apart. There we go. Okay. Now, a pile of wood. Okay, now that we have the barrel apart, I just wanted to show you something real interesting about whiskey barrels. You always hear maybe like um, how they're charred on the inside, and that's true. There's different number of chars, different levels. Normally most distillers go with a number three or a number four, and the, the more char, the more burned it is on the inside, and you'll hear something about maybe uh, an alligator char. And the reason why they call that, and I don't know if the camera will show it, but if you look at the char on the inside of the stave, it looks like the back of an alligator. And so that's why it's called alligator char. So this particular barrel is a char number four. And as you saw from the time lapse, there was, uh, even though we drain all the whiskey that we can get out, there's always residual whiskey. And that's a good thing and a bad thing. Good because it keeps the barrel swollen for the next time that we refill it with something. So we'll put like a rum or um, a whiskey, but not a bourbon because the bourbon has to go into a new barrel. Anywho, and it's bad because uh, we left money on the table. So just wanted to show you what the inside of the, the barrel looks like. And we're gonna have to scrape this off and sand this down so that um, even with a sealer, we don't want to get somebody's pants discolored. Walter has a two-in-one wheel on it, which is basically sandpaper and Scotch-Brite um, sandwiched together in, in sand, Scotch-Brite, sandpaper, Scotch-Brite, sandpaper, all around the wheel. And I wanted to show you the difference between two boards. I don't want to go too deep because I want to leave that black patina, but I don't want anybody to, so once this uh, um, gets stained, so once this gets roughed up, it looks like that. And then I just did the edges just so they're smooth. It's not sharp, there's no sharp edges where on this it's sharp edges, even on the back side. So I'll show you how I do that just, just a little bit. So it's pretty simple. I just take it in and just go back and forth. And you can see the difference already.
like that. And then they get the edges, just literally it's just And then I'll do the back side to just take those high points off. Just like that, piece is done. just want to say that I got a lot of these done, but if I had to do it again, I would have used a ventilation system to get out all the dust. That's what I got to say about that. I'm trying to lay this out on the table from a side point of view. This is the front leg going down to the ground. This is the back leg that's going down to the ground, and this is the armrest. This is a full stave. This stave right here, I basically just cut the tip off and I put a slight angle on there. What degree, I can't tell you. It's basically, I'm matching this about 12 inches up off the bottom. And whatever degree angle that is, that's what it is. Um, this one right here, I cut off both ends. And this is about 23 inches long. So I'm just trying to lay this out here. And then I'll build two of these and then going from one side to the other will be the seat. And then the back will go here. Um, I've never built one of these in my life. I'm only going off of pictures I've seen on the internet. So that's where I'm at now. I got some, uh, stainless screws, got some inch and five eight seven um, stainless, two and a quarter inch seven head, and inch and five eighths number eights. Um, so these are a T15, that's a T20, this T20 bit. Anywho, all stainless. So since this oak is like Oof, an inch thick that's a good barrel yeah about an inch thick I'm gonna and all the oak staves normally when they make a barrel are um, air dried 18 to 24 months so I am going to pre-drill all my holes I'll pr put two screws in right here and two screws in the top here and do that twice um, and then we have our side pieces, basically. There will be, I'm thinking I will put a piece right in here. Um, I, don't know, I, I have these small drops. I might put a piece right in there for a reinforcement. Um, that almost fits in there perfectly because the this is angled right here. So, yeah. Right now, I have determined that I want 22 inches on the inside. So if someone's butt is bigger than 22 inches, they're not gonna fit into this. I clamped my boards in place, and from the front edge to the back is about 17 and a half inches. I've pre-drilled the holes, and I've drilled them more towards, th this is upside down, I've drilled them more towards the inner edge because the outer edge down here, you can see this big gap. It's because the staves have a curve to them. So I'm hitting it right here. So it shouldn't put too much torque on it. If I screwed them clear out here, then it would turn my legs inside. So I've pre-drilled my holes. 
and I'm using 5 8 by 7 um, screws here. And I'm just sticking them right, just, just to scotch underneath of the surface. Because if I go any further than that, I run the potential of having them uh, protrude out the other side. So I'm, I really don't want that. Oh gosh, I love impact drivers, don't you? And these Torx bits are freaking awesome. But since the screws are stainless, the magnetic holder doesn't do much good. I'm at a good point here. I put these braces in, which substantially sturdied it up. I put this brace in across the back and that's what the, the back rest will go on. I used um, some cut boards that we got here, used like this right here. I put this down here as a spacer. So now I know the, I know that the, the back pieces will go in there. And um, let me adjust my stand here. So now I have these laid out here. I have 21 and a half inches from this side over to this side uh, that I can space these out any way I want and they'll slide into the back. And then once I determine that, then I can cut my board for the top here and then I can cut the middle one, which will actually extend out and will grab the back of the armrest. And this one, that the board that um, I already screwed down there, these will screw into the back of that board or the back of this board will go into those because they'll be on this side. This is the bottom that's measured out to 21 and three quarters inch wide. This I flared out. You can see some marks on here that I put. So basically now I have to just start screwing this to it. Um, the question in my head was, how far do I put this board down? I don't know. It's just for looks. So, I mean, I just pick something that looks right. I, um, up to this point, there's only one part that I've, I've used the uh, table saw and that was to cut a width down on the one of the support legs underneath the main chair. I've only been using the chop saw up to this point. Um, and this board right here is ridiculously wide, but honestly, it's not gonna hurt anything being that wide because it's on the back of the chair. So I'm using these, um, the inch and five eighths, seven screws here in the impact driver. I just don't wanna torque these out of position. So I'm trying to hit through this board into the center of the board underneath. Check this out. I finally, I got it done. Looks like this. I don't think the camera does it justice. So far in this whole project, I've only jacked up once. Um, right there, that hole. Unnecessary. So, here's this. And it fits in here like this. Now, granted it needs to be screwed down. Let's see here. Oh. Actually kind of nice having it a little bit springy like this. Then my my uh, armrests will be up here or wherever I want them, honestly. Because the I have to screw the screws into this board back here. And then I have to add the last board right here 
and that will determine the height of the armrest. Yeah. So I'm almost done. Other than that, and not having the whole back screwed on, things, this thing's pretty damn sturdy. Here we are. The back is screwed on. Still a little flimsy, but I mean, screwed on. There's three two and a quarter inch screws hold on each side of there holding that up. And then, so what I did was is I took one of the extra planks and I put it there and I've been kind of working my way from the top checking how it feels giving it the old butt test you know putting it on here like that and um, this is this is where I think it feels really comfortable um, having it down low like that for me so now I just have to mark the boards there and then take a measurement before I take the clamps off. And um, I know that it's not level right now, but it will be. And um, take that measurement, cut the board off, and then screw it to the back of the, the backrest. And then basically um, screw, figure out how much of this I want to stick out and then, um, cut, you know, that'll be cut off and then screw that in there and then, then basically it'll be done. I did this project with, um, trying to use the, um, table saw as little as possible. And so far, again, I've only used it once. So let's get all this mumbo jumbo all taken care of and uh and then i'll probably have to cut this at an angle or grind it or something um i'm not gonna take these off i refuse to do that i'm just gonna grind it in place until it gets nice and whatever we got the back piece mounted i have this side ground down sitting on there might actually turn this board this way. It's probably better. This can all be sanded. This board right here though, and it needs to have the angle. It needs to have the angle ground in it. So like any good woodworker, we have a flap disc. And if you wanna know the grit, it's, um, 1800 I have no freaking idea. It's a Walter Enduroflex Turbo. So you know it's more powerful. Anywho, this is a 3660 grit. Um, I normally deal with stainless and copper, uh, so I don't have a whole lot of woodworking stuff, although there is a wood planer right over there. There's a table saw over there, there's a chop saw sitting on a table right there, and a bunch of other crap. Um, so, this thing eats. What does it eat? Anything you throw at it. Okay. High corner. High corner eliminated. Would you look at that? It's flat. One degree of wobble. Is it intolerance? Oh, God. Let's fix this. Okay, now it's just uh, out to kind of piss me off a little bit here. Let me see what we're working with. Okay, I'm gonna be chasing this all the way down to the floor. Perfect.
Okay, so flush that up, flush that up. We'll take a measurement on this, get this the same distance on both sides, whatever feels comfortable to have sticking out here. Two screws, two screws, two screws, two screws, done. Other than some, some nice sanding on this because I don't like getting splinters. I've gotten a lot of splinters on this whole project. Uh, and then some sort of urethane, some sort. I don't even know where this is going, so this is just a project that got thrown in my lap. Hey, do you think you can do this? Oh, shoot. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I do think I can do that. I'm not trying to sound cocky. I'm just saying. It's, it's not that hard. You've got patience. Oh, hey there. The last two screws for the chair. You know, honestly, what would be more appropriate if I just walked next door to the distillery and got like some whiskey? Hold on, I must be important. Sorry. I'm not that important. Oh, this is nice. Okay, so I got a, it's, it's got a nice lean to it. This has got to get sanded right here. Um, it is, this is my first test. I'm actually kind of scared I might break something. There's enough screws in here to hold up an elephant. So that's good. We got that going for us. Um, would I do anything different? No, not really. I mean, like, probably getting the seat all lined up and, uh, excuse me been snowing here for like the last how many ever we got like 11 inches yesterday so yay us um i tell you what really really helped out a lot is putting these lower cross pieces down here um also pre-putting this board in right here that really helped out a lot um i looked at several drawings of these and i tried to deconstruct it in my mind I thought that, and I, and I really do think that building the sides of it um, first is the way to go. Like, I think that's, I don't know how else, like if you had to do the back and then you tried to do the bottom, what a cluster. Cause then you can't get the right angle, the angle you want. And then also having this, you kind of get to, to feel like the difference um, in height, elevation, angles, uh, messing around with it. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited about this. If I had to do it all over again, it'd take a heck of a lot less time. You know, doing anything the first time always takes forever, but how many of them you build? Well, honestly, you can't just have one of these things. You gotta have two. And then what do you do with the barrel heads? Hey, let's build a little end table because wouldn't that be awesome if there was a little table right here where I could set my Coke instead of setting it on the ground. Or I suppose if one was so inclined, I could put a bracket right here and put that in there or put it out here and rotate it around, get it out of the way. That would be pretty cool. <sighs> yeah, this is really nice. I'm actually pretty proud of myself. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. That's what they're there for, for you to self-explanatory comment. Ugh. I have a lot of fun shooting these videos. Thank you so very much for staying till the end if you're here. 
and um, please hit that like button. That's cool. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell or whatever it is. Hit, hit all the buttons. I don't know. Whatever. Um, anyways, take care. Have a nice night. Today's Friday, Friday night. So have a great weekend. Adios.